So if you bought yourself a diode laser in the last few years, then it probably came with a set of these ultra cheap green goggles. And hopefully you wear them every time you turn your laser on. But a question arises here, are these actually safe? So in this video, what I wanna do is look at these goggles plus the pile behind me and maybe a few other materials just to see how safe they actually are. And with that, let's get started. Hey, how's it going? Steve here, welcome back. Now, I've mentioned on this channel before that I've spent the first several years of my career as a young engineer working in a company that built high power scientific and industrial lasers. And when I started that job, I was issued several sets of goggles, one for every laser that I was gonna work on. And safety was always the top concern. You would never go into a lab where there was a laser running if you weren't wearing goggles, and if you did, someone was probably gonna yell at you. So when I saw these cheap diode lasers starting to appear on the market a few years ago, uh, I was immediately a bit concerned. Uh, yeah, they always seem to come with a cheap pair of green goggles, but there's almost never any kind of indication of what the capabilities of those goggles are, and there's certainly no certification that those goggles have been tested and that they will protect your eyesight. So in this video, what I wanted to do is look at, at a pile of goggles that I have that generally come with all the lasers, as well as a, a couple of pairs that I bought on my own. And I'll tell you why, or I'll show you why I bought those, uh, as well as some materials, because you may end up wanting to build some kind of a containment box for your laser, and you're gonna want a window in it. So if you're gonna drop a piece of acrylic in there, you're gonna wanna know that that acrylic is safe. And that's enough context to get started here. So I'll show you the setup that I have for the experiment, and then I'll run you through uh, all of the goggles that I have here under test, as well as those materials, and you can see for yourself whether those are safe or not. Now to do a proper experiment, what you really need is some kind of way to accurately measure the energy of the light that's getting through your goggles. Uh, that involves uh, you know, a fairly expensive piece of scientific equipment, which I don't have and you probably don't either. So what I wanted to do is set up an experiment that, that I can do here in my shop as well as you can. And all it involves is a laser and a piece of paper. So I raised the laser focus uh, as high as I possibly could and then just laid a piece of paper down. That's the apparatus and that's all you need. All right, and here's the quickest experiment you can ever do. I, all I did was draw a single line and I set the speed to a very low speed of say two millimeters per minute. So the laser's really not moving at all. And uh, then set the power to a, a super low value. And, and I can't stress this enough because if you have it a higher value, you'll cook a hole in your, in your glasses, uh, especially if they work really well. So uh, you definitely don't want a, want a high value here. So in my case, I set it to 2%. Uh, you can start with 1% if you want. Uh, really, the only thing that's important here is to see enough light through the goggles to know that they're having some impact. And then we can just start the experiment and I'll start with the baseline here, which is just the laser running, no goggles in the way. And then I'll start with the ultra cheap goggles. And I did this two ways. I flashed it in front of the beam so you're, the camera basically is looking through the goggles. And then I slid it underneath the laser and you can see in both cases, there's quite a bit of attenuation with these cheap ones, but you can still see quite a bit of light, which is uh, a little shocking. Uh, the next level up is the slightly less cheap green goggles. And uh, again, you can see there's still a bit, a bit of light there, a little less than with the super cheap ones. And again, underneath, uh, uh, you can see the beam shape there and it's just slightly less. Uh, next, I chose a set of these brown goggles and uh, you can see when you're looking through those, you can barely see the laser, it's just a little dot. And if we put the goggles underneath the laser, uh, the beam is effectively gone. So I would say that these goggles are perfect. Uh, then I used my uh, more expensive uh, glasses. And uh, again, uh, they're basically the same kind of density, optic, OD, optical density six. So when you put it under the beam, again, the beam is basically completely absorbed by the goggles, which is exactly what you want. Now, as far as interpreting the results here, you can see those green goggles, which are the ones that typically come with diode lasers. They don't actually work particularly well. They're leaving quite a bit of light getting through. Uh, by contrast, those brown ones, uh, they blocked all of the light at this frequency. 
Uh, more importantly, if you look at the goggles themselves, they actually have the, the uh, light range and the optical density written right on the goggles. So you know they've been designed and tested in a particular way. And that's uh, the kind of goggles you're probably going to want in the long term. Now with the goggles conquered and well understood, I thought I'd look at some of the, some transparent acrylic here because if you're building a box for your laser, you're going to want to put a window in it so you can make sure that you, when you look in there that material is not on fire or some undesirable thing isn't happening. So I pulled a few pieces of transparent acrylic out of my inventory here and I cut some squares out of them. And you can see that these are all colors you, you would have seen in, in lasers. Uh, they're certainly orange, uh, yellow, uh, red, which doesn't seem to be too apparent anymore. And then I pulled this last one, which I had, which is a transparent, dark, uh, dark brownish colored one. And that one I used actually on my SP3624CO2 laser for the lid, which works very well there, but does it work for diode lasers? And we'll find out. Now, if I look at the same tests I did with the goggles here, uh, we'll start with the yellow. You can see uh, the beam gets attenuated, but only maybe 50%. So it isn't the kind of thing you're going to want to use. Orange is a little bit better, uh, maybe 60, 70% attenuation. The beam is, is quite a bit smaller there that's, that's getting through the acrylic. And uh, red, which used to be used in, in diode lasers a lot, you can see it attenuates quite a bit. It's probably the best of the bunch here and uh, almost blocks the entire beam. So if you're going to build a, a housing with a window, you probably want to use red because this dark brown just doesn't attenuate very much at all. So uh, it's probably the worst performer of the bunch. So uh, you can see the results there and uh, you know, pick the right one, which is probably red in this case, if you're making a, a box of your own. Okay, what made all of this possible was uh, the use of a diode laser. In this case, I used the longer B1 and I did a review of it uh, just recently. If you haven't seen that, click up here, go watch that video, I'll see you over there. And hopefully you got something out of this video. So get out there, make your world and I'll see you next time.